From the earliest days of the railway, it was a pioneer. A beautiful and majestic, yet powerful design. This is 563, a London and South Western Railway T3 class that was built in 1893. It is one of the finest examples of express passenger locomotives from the Victorian era, with an incredibly rich history and a remarkable survival story. Our mission is to bring 563 back to life in 2023. If we succeed, this will be the first time the T3 has been seen in steam for 75 years. And to get there, the engine is currently undergoing an extensive overhaul like it's never had before. My name's Nathan and I'm the chair of the 563 Locomotive Group. I'll be looking at the T3's past and the present to understand what this project means for the Swanage Railway and its future. I'm here at the flour mill in the Forest of Dean, where 563 is currently being overhauled. We've already achieved a significant number of milestones, so I'm going to catch up with Bill Parker and the team to see what progress has been made and, crucially, what's left to do. But first, I'm going to speak with Matt McManus to find out where our story began after we acquired the engine. Now, Matt, you were first involved with the project when the initial discussions with the National Railway Museum took place. Could you surmise the journey for us? Um, we had a call from Anthony Calls, the, um, the head of vehicle collections, I mean, curator at the NRM, asking if we would be interested in the T3. Um, and I said, no, we're not interested. It's, um, you know, we haven't got the resources. Um, yeah, it's just something that we, we, we've hired a lot of other engines. We can't hire another one. Um, and he said, OK, OK, and then got back to me a couple of days later. I said, I think you might have misunderstood me. I didn't mean hire. I meant a transfer of ownership which obviously changed the dynamic completely and we had to think very carefully about, because if we're thinking about the enthusiasts and all of us, we're just saying, yes, we'll have it, we'll have it straight away. But it was actually a very important thing that we dismantled that and thought what it could mean to the railway having this engine. So we approached the trust with a proposal uh, to acquire this engine. Uh, the trust unanimously supported it even, but we were very careful to make sure that they understood that it wasn't just a great present that we had a responsibility to look after the engine in perpetuity, just like the NRM have done. Um, and so obviously it was a challenge um, to sort of make sure that we, we were a mature enough organisation to take this on. Um, but obviously we demonstrated that enough and the NRM uh, were happy to let us have it. And uh, here we are today, a good few years later, um, getting towards the end of the overhaul of the engine. In the spring of 2017, the T3 had arrived on the railway and ownership was formally transferred to the Trust. Following a successful fundraising campaign over the course of the summer, enough money had been raised for a stripped-down and feasibility assessment to be undertaken. By the autumn, there was so much resounding support for 563 to return to steam, no sooner had the engine arrived, we found ourselves in the extremely fortunate position to be sending it away, here at the flour mill. So I'm going to catch up with the owner, Bill Parker. Hi Bill, great to see you again. Could you tell us a bit about the flour mill and the work you do here? Yeah, well, we're a steam engine repair shop. We repair steam engines, we repair big steam engines like David Shepard's 9F, we repair little steam engines like, um, well, the extreme example was the National Railway Museum's um, replica of Stevenson's rocket, um, and pretty much everything in between. And now you've seen the engine and got your hands on it, what do you make of it? Well, um, we started with this engine, it was very exciting because it was in almost original condition from when it last left the railway works when presumably Eastleigh back we think in the 40s. Um, my foreman was very excited at the opportunity to dismantle something that was last you know was put together not by volunteers perhaps 10 years ago but by real railway men a, a, a long time ago. We stripped it down but what was most remarkable about it was the firebox. It has a copper firebox like almost all steam engines of its era of the 1890s really like all steam engines in Britain. Could you give us a flavour of the overhaul and the progress you've made so far? We've made or assembled the new copper firebox. We've trial fitted it. Next, that comes out. And then it's just a complicated process of putting a boiler back together that's been stripped right down and completely emptied. And you've been in this business for a long time. So presumably projects like this are what keeps you going? It's a wonderful opportunity. I'm meeting people, um, such as a visit I've had from Swanage people today. Um, 
But the reality is it's hugely rewarding. It's, it's satisfying and um, I'm needed. So I'm still alive and I hope to be doing this for another 10 years. Today, our main focus has been on the construction of the brand new inner firebox. This is where the coal is burnt to heat the water and subsequently create the steam pressure. The lion's share of the assembly work has already been done and when complete, it should give 563 another lease of life right at the heart of the engine. This has been one of the biggest achievements of the project thus far. Once the firebox has been installed and permanently fixed in place, the whole boiler can be lifted and turned the right way up before the final components such as the angle ring, front tube plate and boiler tubes can be fitted. The intention is to complete the boiler before the end of 2022. It's clear to see the pride and painstaking efforts the team are making here to progress the overhaul, but there's also thanks to you, our supporters, for your generous donations and standing orders that have enabled us to get this far. There are, however, other exciting developments to look forward to, which we still need your help with. The locomotive's impressive 6 foot 7 inch driving wheels and smaller 3 foot 7 inch leading wheels have already been checked, non-destructively tested, cleaned and painted in preparation of the next key milestone. The rewheeling of any engine is always a momentous occasion and none more so than for 563. This will be yet another major step towards the reassembly process as we start to bring all the major elements together. At the front end, the smoke box, which was kindly sponsored by a supporter, is already in place. Once the engine is resting on its wheels, the valve gear and motion can start to come together. The complete boiler can take its place, and all the finishing touches like the chimney, cab, pipework and fittings will start to complete the locomotive and bring back its defining features. Of course, however, this is easier said than done. Now more than ever, we need your help to keep the project on track. Your support and enthusiasm for 563 has been so overwhelming, and it's tantalising to be on the home straight. But to finish the reassembly of the T3, it's going to take time and effort. So we therefore need one last push to maintain this incredible momentum and keep the work going. Next year will be 563's 130th birthday. So if we succeed, that's going to be one massive cause for celebration. Of course, the engine here at the flour mill is just one half of the locomotive. In the next episode, I'll be back at the Swanage Railway to look at the T3's tender, our plans to restore it, and what we can look forward to when two become one. If you'd like to find out more about the T3, visit www.563locomotivegroup.co.uk where you can also make a donation towards the overhaul and help 563's return to steam in 2023.